would have been great on Sunflower. Oh, yeah. It's a really tough tune to find the tonal centers and the key centers on. I'll talk about that in a second, but beautiful vocal from Carl there. Brian sing lead. Or maybe Brian and Carl together. Now we got Al. All right, welcome back to the In My Beach Boys Room podcast. I am Adam Schreiner sitting here with Matthew Hartz. And we are getting into 2020 today, doing a full album breakdown, musical Plus analysis. Plus the breakaway single. Plus the breakaway single. I always forget that those are separate. Before we get into the content, let's talk real quick. Let's just get the social media stuff out of the way. You can follow Matthew on Matthew Hart's Music uh, on Instagram and then on Facebook. He is just, you just look up Matthew Hart's and find him on there. That's mainly what we are. Little uh, kid with the banjo. Yeah, little kid with the banjo. John's got yep. a tambourine. Yep. And so um, the that's, that's all we do. Then we're on YouTube here. Uh, like, subscribe. Help us out in whatever way you can. And uh, so this is the last episode of the season and also the last episode of the podcast altogether. Yeah. yeah, the proper. Exactly. We have done everything that we have set out to do at this point. You know, we uh, the podcast started as an idea. Matthew had the idea of, you know, hey, I have a ton of Beach Boys knowledge, musically, history, all that. So I'm a Beach Boys fan. Let's sit down and and put something together. And three season later, uh, well, if we really recap it, it was my accountant that had the idea to make me think about some areas outside of the fiddle world where I had knowledge that could sp- possibly expand my audience. Yeah. And then uh, while I was working on the the Beach Boys Sanctuary, one mo- I was painting a table. I remember because I've done a lot of painting down here, and uh, it dawned on me i thought wait a second what about the beach boys thing you know yeah. and i always had that interest and then you are a family friend at yeah. this point basically and and uh i knew that you had done the diabetes podcast and yep. had that experience and so i i asked you about what you knew about it and then we did you offered to hey i i'd be you know willing to help you with this and then we just there there we go yeah and that was uh you know, right out, right out of COVID. Um, and we, you know, we got into literally we, he was on that. We were in different spots, but in the first episode, he's uh, sitting here, I'm sitting there since then he's had this wall painted Had an artist come in and, and do some really cool artwork in down here. And, uh, yeah, it looks, looks great. And, you know, and so here we are in the, the last episode, uh, of the whole series, the whole podcast. Um, you know, the, if you are new here, this is the first time that you have landed and found uh, on this uh, channel or found this podcast. Real quick, I'll just give you a kind of full recap of what you're what you're going to get into if you if you dive into all these episodes. So in season one, we just were getting into it. Literally, it's more of you know Matthew just teaching me about the history and the context and what's going on and um, how the Beach Boys got started, why Brian Wilson's music is so special and his songwriting is so special, like what makes him such a good songwriter. And, you know, I'm very more um, interview, more teacher, student teaching me. I'm asking him questions, learn a lot, you know, kind of just talking about the music, not really getting into the details. It's kind of a condensed history, too, the more we look back at it, too. Like we... You know, like with some episodes went from like 62 to 64 and like, yeah, man, exactly. And there's a lot was, that goes on in the, yeah, yeah so yeah, condensed for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, uh, and then season one actually ends with this same t- time period that we're ending with today. So season one, um, we end with, uh, 2020. Actually it's the episodes called the end of the 60s. End of the 60s. And we talk about breakaway. We talk about, uh, 
2020, talk about Live in London, uh, even a little bit of Friends gets thrown in there too. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, kind of everything that happens in the in the late 60s. That mm-hmm. wraps up season one. I'm sorry. Actually, then we do a special Carl episode uh, where we just specifically dedicated just to Carl Wilson. Uh, and so then we get into season two. And we had a big shift from season two. Season two. And hang on. I believe in that first season is when we did the Owl Al Jardine, Al Jardine Al, yeah. episode so we got, two, we did yeah. Al's um, like only about five deep or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and that was, was you the know, first... Al Jardine is a badass is the name of that one. Yeah, uh, I and, love your new thumbnail for that too. <laughs> and uh, so we we talk about, you know, we give Al his own episode, Carl has his own episode. I mean, Brian, we talk about his songwriting, but essentially this whole thing is Brian, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's Brian. You, but there is that, we kind of think of that Brian's songwriting episode as focusing yeah. more on him. Yeah, and so... Um, and then when we got, you know, we took a break in between season one and season two. And, and when we got into season two, starting with Sunflower, uh, or actually Phil Flo's box set, it came out. We mm-hmm. kind of did a little bonus episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that was real impactful on me, uh, just that whole box set. And it really ignited something within me. And, and uh, you know, so it was, I was already kind of jacked. And then we just, it, I don't, can't remember if it was your idea or my idea to have you listen to no, the it Sunflower was you. album. You said, you, you told me, you said, hey, I think it's a good idea that, because we had a bunch of time before we started. You're like, can you just like, have you ever listened to Sunflower? No, I, I haven't heard anything off of Sunflower. He said, why don't you just listen to it so we can actually talk about it, you know, and you can actually have a little more background on what's going on. Well, that was the spark that mm-hmm. kind of changed the the direction of how we started doing the podcast because Sunflower became my favorite Beach Boys album. I didn't know how what Sunflower was, and so um, I was super excited in that episode. And then we just kind of because and I of got that, excited because you were excited <laughs> because and... of that. We started doing that with every album mm-hmm. moving forward, where I would listen to it critically, listen, take a little notes. Um, and we did that all the way through season two. Season two was a little longer than season one. And we cover a, uh, we do a, uh, Dennis Wilson episode mm-hmm. dedicated specifically to him. And we do a Michael Love episode in there as mm-hmm. well. So, uh, and then also just the timeline all the way up to the Beach Boys through at that time, which was 2022, uh, and what was going on there. And then, um, that kind of wrapped up. Season two. Right. Then we started season three and we took it even a step further, season three. Well, and we decided the, the, the stimulus for season three was because we had gotten a good, good feedback on uh, analyzing the albums. Yes. And so I said, ah, oh, we got to go back. And I was really, I wanted to do that with you after we'd started with Sunflower and went through all the way through the end of the career with you on that. I was just, I said, man, we got to go back and do the sixties albums like this with you. Just cause I thought it would be fun for you to really dive sure. into that right. music. And I was a little more familiar with the, you know, the sixties, I think that's the reason why we didn't. It wasn't an idea initially, is because I was kind of somewhat familiar to some of the stuff. I didn't realize there was so much, but mm-hmm. you know, there were songs just based off of what I grew up listening to that I didn't know some songs. Yeah, well, know. that's what most people are going. That's what's all on "Endless Summer" and yeah. "Spirit of, right. of America." Right. For, you know, for the most part of mm-hmm. that's why mo- most people, casual fans, that's what they're going to be familiar with. Right, and so then. Yeah, so then we started going through these track by track, and also uh, Matthew started demoing them. Yeah, and I can't remember whose idea was that. I it was. I have was no it idea. Maybe it may have been a comment from somebody. To and be honest, I you know? will not. And I, I'm trying to think because I, I maybe I thought you know, hey, it would be kind of fun to Place show what's going on. And I think on that earliest music episode, I there were a couple little baseline things as I was studying it and and just just unique things that were going on even at the very beginning that I thought I'd need to kind of demonstrate some of this stuff. And yeah. it ended up being popular. Yep. And so we got into it. Yeah, and uh and then that just kind of cascaded to where all of a sudden we were doing almost every song. Well, yeah, it, it's funny because on those first 60s albums, we were doing... You're just like go, kind of picking and choosing. Yeah, picking, yeah. The, picking and choosing the best. Of, yeah, then it gets into, you know, by the time we get to uh, today and summer days and, and, of course, you know, we're going through them all. Oh, yeah. You know, and yeah. you know, I it's don't more, know. Yeah, it's, it's, that was never a conscious <laughs> thought, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But once you have that guitar in your hand, you're like, well, you know, yeah. might, as well, might as well just do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
And so, you know, that, that, and you know, that brings us to essentially now, uh, and we just, we've done everything that, you know, we, we could do, um, as far as the podcast, as far as the podcast goes, goes. we do the podcast will be done. This will be the last episode, but we, we do have some other plans and we will get at the end of the episode. We're going to talk about that. Um, yeah, so make sure and listen yeah, to the yeah, end of the yeah, episode, yeah. That's how folks, they hook, so you yeah, can yeah, see yeah. what our plans next. are. Yeah. Yes. So um, we do want to thank the sponsors. We do. We came up with the sponsorship program. I don't know if that was like halfway through this season or at the beginning. I don't remember when that started, but we started doing a little po- uh, sponsorship program, and it was turned out so well, and we had a ton of people uh, support uh, the podcast and, and um, you know, financially. And uh, we're gonna find a there's gonna we're gonna figure out some way that you can still support if you like the if you like what we did here, even though we're not continuing on with this same style. That um, well, let me ask you: these QR codes, they're still gonna show up. In the yeah, episodes, it'll take right? yeah whatever we decide to do. Yeah. Um, I'll just change the link and whatever they decide to do that, whatever we decide to do, it'll take them to that new thing. And okay. it, you know, or even if, it, if we decide to do nothing, it'll take them to thank you for the thought. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Like, well, and you know, it, it, we'll figure out something. The people, you know, if they just, you know, if people that want to still support it, they can always Venmo and yeah, PayPal, that always, right? Yeah. That always and that helps us a lot. I mean, we, yeah. we've had some really incredible people, uh, you know, very generous and and helping us with this, but you know, we could still use some more support. Yeah, for to sure. do this for yeah, sure. For and sure. and that reminds me, I watch these watching these other YouTube channels sometimes, and at this point in the game, folks, if you have not liked or, yeah, and yeah. subscribed <laughs> and hit the notification bell, you need to do it because it helps the algorithm. See, I don't know what any you of that did great. means. That was perfect. But man. we, yeah. you know, that uh, you I know, know some I, guys will stop the episode. Yeah, as like, okay, we're gonna take a little intermission and make if you're still watching yeah make sure well you and that's like that. a youtube best practice because they say why would you like or subscribe before they even watch any of your stuff so why do it at the beginning do it at the end or in the middle mm-hmm. which i get but we just got into a format and you know i figure at this point i don't even know if we should i we need to tell you to like or subscribe you know like you know that's the drill <laughs> like you yeah. know but anyway um there will be something if you want to you know Support us, you know, in terms of some monetary notes, there will be some some way to do that that we'll figure out. Um, and I think on that, we can get in. Oh, you know what? I had, you know, you have your apologies that you have said. And corrections. Your corrections. Yeah, and I got I have, I have, I have still. mine now that I, I was going, because this is the last episode, I went back and I was kind of just reviewing it's not apologies anyway. It's yeah. just correction. Well, mine's, a, mine's an apology. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Well, geez. Because um, mine's not a correction. But as I was going back through um, everything, I you know, this – the Beach Boys world is dense, both musically and historically. And there's a lot of times going through this podcast that I didn't retain everything, okay? And you so be I, to, I – there's many times when I'm like, I will say something and be like, we already covered, you know, I realized like we already covered that and it just didn't stick. Um, I actually was a decent student in school, but I also d- was one of those students that needed to take notes to really retain stuff. And I don't take notes when, when Matthew's been teaching me. So I do apologize if I'm going through and I ask something, Matthew something twice or, you know, I something like that, because um, it's just a lot. A lot I think you know. that you've done it relatively very few times for the amount of content that we've created, buddy. <laughs> it's I a mean, lot. It, there's no way. I mean, you, you, you've done an excellent job. And, uh, you know, I know that, you know, when we've talked just casually about things, I mean, it always kind of surprises me what you do remember and, and about what we've talked about yeah. and we can have discussions without me having to prompt you and, you know, you know, you, you remember a lot of it. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but that is our very long winded. We had to do this to, because this is the last episode. And if anybody's new to this, to the podcast or the channel, that's what you can expect as you binge all the, the rest of the episodes, um, going through this. So, uh, with that, Let's let's get to why we are here, and that is to talk about 2020. The 2020. Um, what you? I'll let you take it to start here. And do then, you want me to do the context? First yeah, yeah. Let's then, do that. And then you. Okay. Well, wow. 2020. You know, it's it's a different album. Uh, as I was digging into it, 
the other night, though, it's just I, I found a newfound appreciation for it. It's also the album that came out in my birth year. Okay. 1969. So this is, you know, and we'll get into some of that a little bit more because there's some stuff specifically right around the time I was born. Um, but it's, you know, whereas the trilogy, my trilogy albums, Smiley Smile, Wild Honey, and Friends, you know, those were still largely guided by a Mr. Brian Wilson and full of great Brian Wilson tunes that were all being worked on at the time, right? This album has some great Brian Wilson music on it, but most of it is older stuff that they that they had to go back and get from from uh, you know a like previous, couple years yeah, earlier times, yeah. and and included on it. Um, so it's it's a, a collection of of uh, recent singles. The Do It Again single had come out in July of sixty eight. Um, Bluebirds Over the Mountains, Bruce's thing, it came out in December, early December of 68. So they were out before the album came out. And then shortly after the album came out in February, I, Carl's I Can Hear Music, uh, backed with All I Want to Do, um, it came out in March. So the, the, those are the singles from the album, I should say, Bluebirds Over the Mountain was also the B side of it was Never Learn Night Not to Love. Okay. Um, those, and, and, and again, we've talked about Do It Again went 20 in the US, mm -hmm. but number one in the UK. Mm -hmm. Bluebirds was like number 61 in the US and 33 in the UK, which is, you know, pretty decent. Uh, I Can Hear Music was 24 in the US and 10 in the UK. So those th those are all pretty respectable. So those are on the album. Uh, you've got some great new Dennis Wilson songs because after his little initial spark on Friends, he He's really yeah, starts it, yeah. to develop it. You know, and this is why people say, "Wow, Dennis really started blossoming quickly." Okay, you know, along with Carl taking over the helm of the whole recording, you know, guiding the recordings and producing stuff. You know, you had Dennis doing his writing stuff and helping with the producing too. And so that's, that's a part of this. And then Bruce has some great contributions to this record. Al has in, in, and of course, Mike's all over it. Um, Brian was pretty sick while they were recording 2020. So he was not actively involved very much in friends. He was, you know, just prior to this, he was very involved. Right. Um, so you've got to, you, you, this is the point where Carl takes the reins because he has to. Right. And this is where the big shift, you know, the I Can Hear Music single and 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 uh, 2020 album is this, David Leaf says, this is where the, the ball got handed to Carl officially, even though he'd been helping a ton with Smiley Smile and, right, right. and Wild Honey and Friends, right? You kind of just said, okay, you're, you've been the apprentice, now here you go. Here you go. Yeah, um, here are the keys. So that's, you know, that's... It, that's a big moment in Beach Boy history. Now I want to talk about the packaging a little bit. The 2020 album is the first cover that does not have a Mr. Brian Wilson on the cover. You've yeah. got the five with Bruce, right? I always like the picture. It's cool. I yeah, I like the pic. It's a cool picture. I don't really like it. I don't really like it as an album cover though. Uh huh. You know, I don't know. There's, you know, it's so there's there was just such amazing covers in their catalog that I would rank this one pretty low as mm -hmm. far as like eye catching or stimulating. Now yeah. the back of it's cool because it's a play on that where they've, they've, uh, you know, kind of moved and yeah, got that photo effect, effect with yeah. it. But 2020 refers to, this is their 20th studio album for Capitol. Oh. 20, or I think that's the studio album. I didn't say 20th, whatever. It's the 20th for Capitol. Uh -huh. Right. Um, and 2020, this is funny now. You think Brian's not here, but there he is. Ah, nice. I always See, that's love cool. that. And I really do that's, love that. I, like I, that. I, I want to get another copy of 2020 and have this framed just as the the gatefold like this. Like I have my Dennis Wilson Pacific Ocean. Yeah, because that's cool. Yeah. That's really, that's, uh, 
I want. I knew you. That's creative. Like that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So you got that. Um, let's see. Most of this is recorded at Brian's house. Uh, a, but some of it is done at Capitol, uh, especially the Capitol Studios were used for sweetening some things and and uh, you know just just extra work. But a, a lot of the work was done at Brian's house. Um, the engineer, of course, is Stephen Desper still, and he's 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 full on with them now. He's a big big part of getting these things together. Um, let's see. I so, think that's about all all of the all of the context that I've got. So so Brian so Brian help me with just the timeline of things. Brian is institutionalized but he's also like what like how is that all is he like gone when he's institutionalized like he's like put like in a hospital, he's in for, a hospital for an extended yes. period of time. I don't know I'm not going to lie and say I know how long but I know that it was you know it was significant. So you know? so he was And able this to... was also the first time that anything like that had been done and no one knew that for years that that this early in the game that you know, and I, I've heard stories that he checked himself into, you know, I, I, I always kind of assumed when I found out that maybe the family had been involved because they knew that he was having some, you know, some issues and, you know, after the smile thing and so, all during this. So, so then it's, but, it, but it's being recorded at his house and he just isn't there. Mm-hmm. Is that oh, kind yeah. of what's going on? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. But I mean, I, I'm sure that some of the recording he's, he's involved in, in some of it too. I right. don't want to completely, do, not, but, but, but basically kind of a non-participant. Yeah. And especially compared to previous albums. Up to yes. Point, right? Right, right. Right. Up to, you know, remember smiley, smile, wild honey and friends. He's really involved uh-huh. still. Okay, that was just kind of a little clarification I need, needed. Uh, so that's is that it for context? That's then? it for context. Other than I wanted to say something about the guitar, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my Les Paul today, and it's not because they used Les Pauls during this period. I just love this guitar, but I did want to say, uh, you know, during this time, Al played a Red Strat, a Red Stratocaster, and I used to have one. This is back in. I had a bigger guitar collection up before the big real estate crash of two thousand and eight, and I had. I still wish I had that red strap because it would be so cool to have in here. And then I had a Les Paul. Um, I had a Les Paul Deluxe Gold Top, which uh, Blondie is pictured playing in the early seventies, uh, a Les Paul gold top. It wasn't a deluxe. Mine was a deluxe that had the mini humbuckers in it, but it's also made in 1969, my gold top. And I sold that guitar. And so I've got this, a new Les Paul that I bought from my cousin a few years ago. And I love this guitar, but I did have a, a dandy and I still regret that stuff so much. Um, there's a couple other guitars I want to add to the collection. And one is they have a, because I've got those Olympic white instruments that uh-huh. they were using yeah, early me. on. Uh, Carl played, I don't think it was Olympic white. It was more of a, just a, a cream colored Telecaster. And Al played it sometimes too. At the same time that Al played the Red Strat along with Carl's playing the semi hollow body guitars like Gibson and Epiphone the 335 type guitars. Um, so that along with the Dan Electro six string bass, which I had one of those two and exactly the right color, um, are the, the things I wanted to finish off kind of like the guitar section of, of this thing. And so I just wanted to make a quick note about that and I'll be using the Les Paul today, but anyway, there yeah. you go. Now <laughs> you can start with uh, your 2020. Notes. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So just, Overall, so love the album. Great. Love the album. Yeah, it was, Excellent. you know, and, and you know, I don't know why I didn't think I was going to like it. I think it might be because I don't like the cover. So like the cover doesn't like, doesn't look like that appealing to me. So I'm like, yeah, what's inside can't be that great. Well, it's terrible, terrible way to think. But that is what I, I, I that's the only reason. I got to I- ask you now, what, what do you, as much as you love Sunflower, what do you think of that Sunflower cover? Yeah, I'm not a fan of that one either. Okay, that's I might, a, yeah. I might even I might even say that. I don't know. Okay. In fact, I probably like the sunflower cover less than this. Yeah, that's you a, know yeah. what I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But uh, 
no, this was this was good. The only, you know, great album overall. This just didn't feel. Uh, what's what did I see? There's a specific song that really made me feel, um, like oh, like um, I kind of felt like pieced together, kind of. That's well, it is pieced together. It's kind of you know those singles and then the old brian yeah. tunes and then a couple of dennis tunes where you know with friends and wild honey it's like you've had this cohesive theme. Yes. yeah you know where i don't mm-hmm. i don't feel yeah the that. people often say that about this record but individually each song i like you know mm-hmm. what i mean so it's like even though it didn't have which is kind of weird because there's like uh and I think at this point I could probably just get in to do it again because that's just my basic thoughts. Well, do you, you okay? Have, yeah, you know, yeah. So do you want to start getting yeah, into the tunes? Yeah, then? Cause, okay. well, because one thing kind of along the same along the same lines there is that you know at at the end of do it again it kind of feels like it's going to do the thing that songs do where like something happens at the end of a song and it goes into the next song Mm -hmm. and i felt like that was what was going to happen with do it again because there's something happening at the end and so i was like oh it's going to go into like one of those where it's going to just feel like you know an album that they do something at the end to make it feel like well you know what is on the end of that don't you what's that that's the workshop session from smile is that what that is yeah oh okay so they just put a little bit yeah there's one of those moments one of those moments yeah (laughs) see but i actually do remember that yeah yeah so just real faintly yeah at the end and i don't know if it i don't think it's on the single i think it's only on this that it's on the album album cut okay um but i might be wrong on that okay (laughs) and go ahead and eviscerate me again in the comments Um, but whatever so then okay so then the beginning of i don't know what's the noise is at the beginning, but I like that. Well, that's the drum sound that Stephen Desper came up. It says uh, tape delays. He, he said it's a bunch of de- tape delays used together. to, And he came up with it independently, and they had gone someplace for lunch. When they came back, he says, hey, I came up with the sound, and they loved it. Yeah. You so, know, it's, it kind of it gives it like this like uh, kind of hip, new, fresh feel. Like it's this, almost robotic. Almost, yeah. But like It's a synthetic sound. Yeah, but I love it. it. But it's yeah, it's something that makes it feel like not part of these times. I don't know, like it, like mm-hmm. like ahead of its time kind of sound. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, but then with that, you get into the song that totally feels like something from their early stuff, right? And like, it was that's why it's do it again. That's why they wrote what, it that way. You know, that's makes sense. And we, that's it's returning to their early stuff, not only. Uh, in themes lyrically, but also the music that Brian uses on it um, is power chords and uh, you know it, even that 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 drum beat you know it's 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 kind of a you know a cool you know just basic rock beat but it's got that delay element in it that that gives it that kind of new thing so it's do it again with with kind of that new stuff everything else about do it again is a is a is a look back. You yeah, know? yeah, which is was blatantly apparent to me as soon as I was said, you know, even before I like, just as I was listening to it, walking around the house or walking my dog, like it was like, oh, this is a early, this has that early vibe on it. So yeah, well, remember you, when we talk about it, um, might be in the end of the '60s, and mm-hmm. again, you just can't. It's hard to get all the <laughs> stuff that I give you, but we we talk about how it it got back to using these power chords, you know, the surf stuff, you know. Yeah, that's the surf guitar sound, the Chuck Berry stuff, right? But then in the middle, with a girl, the lonely sea looks good with moonlight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're they're name checking several of their old ballads, Surfer Girl, Lonely Sea. Right. Uh Moonlight, I'm sure, is in one of the uh-huh. things you know, it's a makes your night times warm and out of sight, you know, so it's like the old you know, basic surf stuff and back to their ballads in the middle of the bridge. It's just a really cool thing put together. You want me to get into a little bit of the Yeah, music I guess just quick? one thing, you know, now that you just, another point about the, um, if we did cover this in the that other episode is that by going through these tracks individually and having you show, it's almost like I get to experience the music. So it, be, it like solidifies this stuff in my head. Like, if you so so if you say this on which now that you say that it's like I do remember you you would bring this up in that in that partner episode of the end of the sixties is that I didn't have any 
anything else to like grab onto, you know, like, mm-hmm. and even the fact that you just, you know, rifled off those lyrics, which obviously I noticed in here, but having not done what we did, I would have never known, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it just is kind of like this whole process has really solidified like the beach boys knowledge with me because it's not, I'm not just sitting here listening to it. Like you tell me and then I get to watch and experience it. So, well, and you, and like I say, you've got a great ear. I don't think every casual fan, I don't know if it would help them as much as it helps you just because I think you have a really great ear. I'll go ahead and so, you know, you've got the the drums come in and then you've got, you know, the power chord comes in in the key of E flat. My favorite moment in the entire song, and it is a small deal, and it only happens in the first part of the first verse. As a matter of fact, I might have you play just the first part so people can hear that drum sound, and I want to, I'm going to have you stop it. I'm going to point out this moment because it never, it doesn't happen again in the song, save for maybe the last verse, but I want to go ahead and have you play that. It's coming right here. Go ahead and stop right there. Okay, so what happens there? It's very, it's really subtle. It's automatic when I talk with old friends. The conversation turns to girls we knew were there. Now we're going to A flat. But we're going to keep the E flat in the bass, and that's the five. It's not that weird, but but so the bass stays on that E flat while the rest of the band goes to a full on A flat. And then they then they go to that B flat that way. The regular way that that would sound is. And they do it this way. They go to a full on A flat there, and the bass does too, and then to the B flat. So that's just a one, four, five. And Brian just subtly changes that in that very first moment. Where their hair. And just that right there has always driven me nuts. So that's one little <laughs> in spot a good there. Way. So anyway, I'm going to go through more of the music now. Where their hair. See, their hair was soft. And the beach was the place to go The sun tan bodies and waves The same thing, really basic stuff Surfing safari Full on A flat Back to E And then you've got the middle part Basically does the same Dun, 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 dun Same chords. Now, here we go. A flat. And then we're going to a C minor with G in the bass. And then F minor. And then back to the A flat. And then G minor 7. And then it's kind of the the, ba- the bass is going to A flat, but the rest of the band might be doing an F minor. Right here, sorry. And then B flat. Dip, 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 so long. Anyway, and then the, the music is pretty much the same out. From the end of that, the that's that's the music and do it again. It's very yeah, very early Beach Boysy for mm-hmm. sure. These the the middle part is <clears throat> is really cool. It's a it's it doesn't seem like as much, but it's some pretty cool ways to use the chords. So anyway, uh, so then we get into I can hear music. Yes. Whew. So. As I've said before, I am an album guy. I love listening to full albums. A lot of times, and this used to be, you know, back in the, like the 90s when I grew up, it was, you know, you'd hear a song, like a hot song on the radio. Then you get the album. When you get the, when I would get the album, I would play that one song that I, the single that I wanted to listen to. Um, and then 
the rest, you know, no matter where that song was in the album, I would go to that song and then I'd re- listen to the rest of the album from that, from that point. This was actually that song for me. Like when I would go, when, as I was listening to this song for the past like couple weeks, I'm mean, sorry, this album, I would start with, I would go right to this song because I love this song so much. The way that Carl's vocals come in on this one, mm-hmm. it's, it's up there for the Carl moments of the, and I, you know, I want to, I need to go through and look at all my favorite Carl moments like this. Mm-hmm. Cause that, the, the vocals on this are just, just so just, it just does that thing. It does that Carl thing. And, um, and so then that, that hook right there of, of that just made this made, love the rest of the song. I, the, um, the breakdown has kind of a really fun breakdown that I didn't expect initially. You mean, I I hear the music all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. is that a breakdown? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Well, I don't even that know is. what breakdown. Breakdown is <laughs> yeah. kind of a new term for for me. Breakdown means a fiddle breakdown. Oh, but, okay, or, you okay. know, like a, an actual break breakdown type of a yeah, song. I might even be saying the wrong. Well, thing, no, but, yeah. I I've heard other people use that you to describe a bridge or a or like a, a middle a middle kind, section yeah. or something like that. Now, the reason there's so many Carl moments is this is the first. This is Carl first big real production by himself brian's not even singing on this bruce says this is the first beach boy record where brian doesn't even sing wait the first like song the first song yeah first song or you know a single maybe you know but but where he's not even singing any background vocals now brian said on the two furs um in his notes on those i believe is where i saw this and I might have seen it someplace else. He says he played piano on it. And I see some places that say he's on the record and some places that say he isn't on the record. Okay. But he's definitely not singing on it, which is a, a pretty big deal. Think of you know him and his voice. And even it, it was still in fantastic shape at this point. You yeah. know, but might have you know been a... Maybe he didn't want to and maybe he was in the hospital or yeah. when they did it yeah. or whatever. But yeah. so that's... That's kind of the the thing on that. Other thing is, did you know it's a cover? I didn't, or okay, maybe yeah. maybe that was maybe I did. No, I think I did. I yeah, think yeah. I did so know this that was one, a actually. Ronettes tune. Uh, I think sixty six, and so it's a Spectre thing. Okay. Um, and it's usually Brian copy Inspector, but so Jeff Berry. Ellie Greenwich and uh, Phil Spector get the writing credits on it. So it's not, you know, we're going through the chords of somebody else's music, but I do want to, we're in the key of C. And this is the way. E minor or E minor seven. So that's the three and then the four and then the five. I always love a good uh, one, three minor or one, three, four, five progression. It climbs. Mm-hmm. This is the way. I was dreaming. The way that it is. Oh, no. Quick F minor and back to F and then to G and then C D minor seven. I Again, same thing, D minor 7, G, O, C, and C7, then F, and F minor. Da, 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 da. Quick 2 5. That's basically the music to it. Not 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 real difficult music. How uh, just because I had never heard the original, how different is the? It's pretty close. Uh, is it pretty this close? Is, a, is this one of those pretty, ones that's yeah, pretty close? Yeah, okay. I, I don't. Now that being said, I'm not really sure if they have the that middle section in there. I, I I'm I'm kind of guessing they don't. It's been a while since I've heard yeah. the Ronettes version of this. Um, so then we go to uh, Bluebirds Over the Mountain. Mm-hmm. So having listened to this already on Live in London, I already you know liked it on mm-hmm. that one. Uh, when I first listened to it from the studio version, I was definitely more like, eh, I really like that live version. You know, mm-hmm. damn, that live version is kind of tough to beat. Uh, but then the more I listened to it, the more I kind of found little things I liked. Obviously, you, I think the reason why I like the live version version more is because ed carter is just that the the tone the tone of that live 
guitar. Guitar. Even though it's a screaming it's, lead guitar, and he's the too. same guy. Yeah, on, on here this too, too. And, it's, and it's there. But there's something about the the tone for sure. The tone of it live, as opposed to the tone of it like that super clean. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know, just gives it more of like that. Like we're shredding, you know, live. Um, that's obvious. But what wasn't obvious on the is there something crazy about this bass line like this yeah like no. this this bass line is like i was like listening intently the bass line whatever it's doing is i don't know is it funky like what's the i don't know how yeah, it's, you... well it, i i'm 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 guessing that it's bruce's arrangement and bruce's ideas on the bass line and everything it's larry nectal is playing the bass on it famous keyboard player from the wrecking crew guys um but also he's also a, a, a multi-instrumentalist uh and of course, I mentioned Ed is Ed Carter's playing the guitar on here, and it is a scream and lead guitar part, and I love it on here. I might like it better on here than I do on the live one, just because oh. I like some of his licks okay. better on 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 this one and some of the. Although some of it's the same, we need to talk about the tune itself. Is a cover, cover right? Uh, the guy that originally that wrote it and originally recorded it in 1958 was a guy named Ursel Hickey which I don't know that version much at all. Now, in the, maybe the early early 60s, Richie Valens, the guy that did La Bamba, mm-hmm. okay, okay. he did a, a cover of this. And Bruce was working with Richie Valens at that time. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking that Bruce is basing his cover off the Richie Valens version, which I haven't heard that too much either. Um, you know, it's just a... the you know it's a little rocker but it's you know there's more things going on than 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 you really notice you know right out of the gate and at least when i was digging into it the other night there's a couple of things chord wise qu- couple of things chord wise that were it's oh wow okay gotcha there it's not it's not real difficult but the bass line is pretty intricate so we've got uh blue it's in the key of a Bluebirds over the mountain and deep in the sea. Bluebirds over the mountain. So that was just A, D, and E, just three basic chords in the key of A. But then you go to, then it goes to the, uh, the next part is D, then to G. So the flat seven, which is the sub for the four. So you got four, flat seven, D, G, and then A. I was kind of unaware of that just listening to the track. B major and then an E. Now, underneath that is a bass line that's kind of some, something like the. Kind of like that. And then that's over the first section stuff, right? But here's the that over that a boy and a girl, they once fell in love. Here's the bass line. Pretty, yeah, that's really, okay. That's really, what I'm, I'm glad that you. I'm glad that you just highlighted that because I totally. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's cool. Very cool tune, and can't say enough about Ed there either. Um, so good there. Yeah, go on to the next. So be with me. Who is singing? Dennis. Dennis is singing. Mm-hmm. Okay, and it's a Dennis tune. That's why probably I couldn't. So is this the first? Where, no, like singing like this. I just, it's felt, the vocals felt so different. I had such a hard time. I was like, I don't know. This, this, uh, Dennis, this Dennis. No, he was singing Little Bird and Be Still on Friends. You right, know? I guess, but that, I don't know. It seemed different. Yeah, he might have started as, he was starting to mature a little yeah, bit. Okay. As a, and he might be a little bit darker quality to his, this is kind of a dark track. That, you know? Maybe that's it. That dark I, well, I do that... want you to play the uh, the 
the opening to this because it's just a great track. This track, this is one of the basic tracks that I don't think was recorded at Brian's house. It was recorded at the Capitol Studios, and there's uh, there's lots of horns and lots of strings. Yeah, on it. yeah, the, so yeah. The, that's actually what I. This was that one. might be why they did it down at the bigger studio too, because they instead of at Brian's house is because it's got a lot of a lot of stuff on it. on it. Yeah, yeah and the um, as the, I, I just the 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 there was part of me that's like wanted, and I'm sure the sessions have it, obviously, but like wanted to hear it without the vocals, you know, because there's mm-hmm. just so much going on. Well, you know what? Earlier you you played. We were looking for that "Be with Me" track, and it, could could you bring up a little bit of Dennis's demo on that? Okay, so I'm playing the the sessions for this one, right? This is now, and we need to mention that there is a it was a digital only release again, just like Wake the World for Friends. This was called I Can Hear Music, the 2020 sessions, and uh, so there on there is is Dennis's demo for this, and I wanted you to play a little bit of that because it's just him and the piano, and it's so beautiful. Okay, so just play uh, "Be with Me" the demo. Yeah. You're going out tonight. You put your vehicle looking close on. Can you tell that's Dennis's now, voice? Now, yes. Raspy. Yes. And he's... I don't remember what you said. That's all I said. I wouldn't. What a great tune. Anyway. Doesn't make any difference to me. Go ahead and cut that now. Play yeah, a I little think it's just bit the way he's singing. I think it's the just ba- the way Go ahead singing. and play some of the basic track without the vocals now that we found. And so we can hear those horns and, st- horns and strings. Trombones. Yeah, this is awesome. The chords are sick too, man. Strings. Flute. The flutes. A lot of people on here. Okay, now go ahead and cut that one. Now, play just a little bit of the actual cut, and I want you to listen to Dennis's voice over the top of that now, after hearing the demo and that. Does that sound more like Dennis now? Well, yeah, now that it doesn't, you put it out, but... It's double-tracked. I think it's because... uh, I think I was still in the mindset that Dennis just really, really isn't singing a lot. You know, I'll, this is when he's starting to sing more. Like last, right, you know, right. Last he got couple, those. Was, he started to. It's starting to happen more. So just in my brain, I'm like, there's no way it could be Dennis. Like, was this Brian or something? Okay. Like, you know, being because he was. I don't know. I just didn't know what it was and and or who it was. Um, but I think it's the kind of that more. That yeah, yeah there's that darker vibe on it, but. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny that you had, you know, I, I was like, a, a, literally in my notes, I'd love to hear it without the vocals. And it was like the song that you like, we should listen to this without the vocals. Yeah, yeah. well, the first time I ever heard it without the vocals, I have to admit, I, got, I gained a newfound respect for it. I want to go through the music for it. I think it's in the key of B flat. Dennis's music is crazy. You know, he's he's organic and he has less rules involved than Brian. <laughs> So you start, it's in B flat, I think. But then we start with the six, a G minor, G minor seven, going out tonight. And then G minor seven with a C in the bass, a real Brian chord. And then C minor seven with F in the bass, same thing, but just way up. About some little thing I said, G minor seven. Back to G minor seven with a C in the bass. And then C minor seven with the F in the bass, and then back to B flat, which is the one, but keep the five in the bass, which is the F, which was already there on the chord before. But this is all real Brian-like stuff that Dennis has learned. You know, that's how he's learned how to write songs. He doesn't even know this stuff is hard and and weird. I uh-huh. don't think. Yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. The 
the wind's really blowing This time there's done I wonder if she's not in And then B flat with the F in the bass Dun 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 Back to C minor 7 with the F in the bass and then G with the D in the bass is like a key change and then we go down to I've decided I like a D minor 7 with the C in the bass so that and then it does that a couple times and then we go C minor, then a C, maybe C minor 7, C minor 7, and then uh, G minor 7 with a C in the bass, C minor, da 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 and then you're back, da 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 so cool, oh, man. man that's that awesome. is a great Dennis Wilson tune, and it's solely credited to him. That's awesome. Okay, so then we get into All I Want to Do. All I Want to Do. Not, not to be confused with All I Want to Do. No, which, how weird is that? They were working on the other All I Want to Do at the same time. Not only is it weird that we've got two songs with that same title i mean that maybe dennis was working on this one first but you know they and they and they slightly changed so this is a dennis song then well i yeah i, I, I spoiled the spoiler alert. that's okay yeah, yeah but so that's another, a dennis song and all i want to do is a mike song. brian and mike brian and mike. brian okay. and mike and so the it's weird that they would have the same title even in their whole catalog but totally. let alone they were working on the songs at the same yeah. time so that's wild that's a question um, mark yeah and so the other thing is is that Dem dennis wilson and i was just reminded of this the other day the stephen kalinich the poet that they i get i said that dennis worked with him with him first actually i think carl worked with stephen first in 1967 on some uh, on a project called leaves of grass and then dennis did his writing with him on friends so he was on little little bird and be still you know he's the guy that's responsible for the words on those beautiful serene tunes well guess who's responsible for a lot of the words on this rock, I mean, it's just a raucous, just, yeah, yeah, rocker, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. he's the guy that helped Dennis write this too. And then the other cool thing I think is the demo. Dennis is singing it, but for the album, Dennis asked Mike to sing it. And this, of course, you know, they're writing together a lot in the late '60s and early '70s. They're writing together. Son did some of their best work, but then Dennis gives this song to Mike to sing for uh -huh. the album, you know, for, for all of the stuff they had going on between them. I just, you know, interesting. I thought Dennis did his demo was really good. And I, I always kind of wondered why Dennis didn't sing this. Um, but he gives it to Mike and Mike does a great job. I mean, he, 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 he's rocking on his it, vocal. Is on uh, Ed on the guitar on this one? Yes. Yeah. yeah okay, and I was going to yeah, make mention yeah. of that too. Uh, now, at the very end of this number, folks, there's a there's a little surprise, and maybe we need to give one of our little disclaimers disclaimers uh, uh, to people that don't like hearing this kind of content. <laughs> yeah, this for is another thing, own, own kind of uh, earmuffs if you're sensitive yeah, or have uh, underage listeners. Dennis was doing a lot of uh, uh, questionable stuff during this time, right. <laughs> but I get Stephen Desper tells the story that uh, they were working on this thing and and he decided he wanted wanted something authentic to go on the end of it, and he went out and found a gal and then they set up a the lady of the night. Yeah. They 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 uh, set up a little uh, room in the recording studio and recorded Dennis and her, you Getting know, it on. yeah. And and uh, so if you listen, if we want to play, if we want to play a little bit of the very yeah. end of the, I think we were gonna say let's let's play a little bit of the front just because so it's sexist. such a raucous, uh, just a rocking raucous tune and Mike's vocal is so strong. Okay, you know, it's the opposite of be still. Yeah. <laughs>
power chords. Ed. Yeah. G. A. D. Now A. Now C. That's probably D to G. I can just do my music part now. A, and then a little bit of that C. So anyway, that's... The it is a, just a jamming song. Yeah, and Mike is... I, that's, that's about his hardest edged vocal that he has in the, the catalog. For sure. You know? For sure. Uh, now let's play the very end of it. You so, got to press... I'm not sure that on this... On this, this is the re-release that we've... This is, yeah, the remaster from 2001. Yeah, and it's, to me, I've heard... I remember on the twofers, especially because my... Uh, I was married at the time, and, and, a, and a brother and sister-in-law of mine were kind of listening to these things with me, and they were younger. They were in their teens, and they both picked this out. Oh, they... Oh, yeah, really? yeah, yeah. So it was... Because uh, I didn't they, catch They this. go, whoa. I didn't, yeah. ca- I didn't catch Yeah, and I think this. it's because it, it, it must be maybe when they re- Maybe when they remastered it. They made it less audible. Yeah. <laughs> but should we play a little bit of the yeah. end of it? And press your headphones close if you want to hear it, folks. And, uh, I mean, don't judge me, but I'm going to press my headphones close. You can hear the breathing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So anyway, Good times there's... for them. So yeah. <laughs> they, they put that in the... So they, like, brought that into the studio and had it done in the studio? Yes, yes, yes. Like, with, like, here's my audience? Here's, here, no, no audience. It okay. was just Dennis and the girl. And, and they said, it, no, here's the other fun thing. And, yeah, Steven. <laughs> Desperate. Okay, so he was there. He was having to record it. But they set up a. They said, "I." Here's the funny oh, thing about it, is I think they set the bed up in Mike's meditation room. Oh and, wow! <laughs> and, oh. And that's at least the stories I've heard. I wonder so. if that was a selling point for her. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Um, so anyway, we'll, we'll. Yeah, and then okay, hilarious. Then we're gonna go to the nearest faraway place. Yes, which is just a very nice. Very nice too. Just very, nice. it's it's. I didn't beautiful. have a lot. It was just beautiful. Just very There's, nice and soothing. I've got a book up there. It was a Beach Boys biography that was written by the late Timothy White, who was a great writer for Crawd Addy and Rolling Stone, who did some of the best writing on Brian that there was, and he called his book the nearest faraway place. Even though this is a Bruce tune, this is a Bruce produced thing. He uh, he played it. If you uh, that Beach Boys live in Paris thing that mm-hmm. I had you watch on YouTube. He's playing it solo. Mm. And during 1969, uh, at least, you know, it was common for him to, I don't know if it was kind of at intermission time or when it was, but he would play this solo at the piano during Beach Boy concerts. So, um, and it's got some pretty chords in it. I went, went through it. So it's, basic, it's basically kind of a descending bass line thing. So we got E, and then we're going to have a uh, G sharp minor with a D sharp in the bass. G sharp minor 7, so dun. then E7 with the flat 7 in the bass, and then an A in third inversion, C sharp in the bass, A minor with the C in the bass, and then E with a B in the bass, and then A with a B in the bass, and then B. Er. And back in that thing. Oh, sorry. And then we've got a middle part that goes like a C minor or C sharp minor seven over an F sharp no, or with an F sharp in the bass. 
then F sharp, F sharp seven, can't say anything today, and then a B major seven, but it's also got the F in the bottom, and then a B flat or a B six, and back to that same two chords on the front, and then B. Had does a little half step thing there, and then up, up to C, and back to B seven. And then we've got E minor 7, and then same thing with a D in the bass, and then A with a C sharp in the bass, and then G with a B in the bass, A, D, 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 and then... Let's see, how does it sit? Let me, let me do that again. Let's see. something so that's the sequence of chords and then he gets down to and he runs that back down to that b and then he goes up to he just modulates to f plays that whole pretty progression in f the front one and then on the very end he modulates another half step to f sharp and reprises it on that tinkly piano thing but uh brian gave him props on this he said i thought in the two first he says i thought bruce did a beautiful thing with the nearest far away place so there we go nice it's kind of discompobulated yeah I, I was i mean i was interested watching that I mean, watching you work through all that um so then we go to cotton fields yes this is the original cotton fields which you've you've now heard the single version that al did shortly after this um, that was a, a hit in the UK and the, actually the UK pressing of Sunflower. We mentioned it in the other. It actually doesn't start with slip on fluid. Sl- slip <laughs> on through. It starts with uh, the single version of Cotfields, which is not this. This was suggested by Al again, much like the Sloop John B had been suggested. But this is the one of the things during 2020 that Brian was actually involved with. And this is kind of a Brian-produced... Okay version and it's a folk folksier version it's got the banjo on yeah. it featured and there's i i really i always liked this version i like the uh, i like the single version too but there's a special charm to this one that i that i really really like and is um and this is a cover cover this is an old, old folk song, song. right huddy right. led better um yeah. and and so this yeah i love this song too um this was the moment in the album that I had the like realization of like the um like that it wasn't very like that it felt pieced together. Right. Because this song is a great song and I really like it, but it's like this like kind of random a random fit. Like I'm sure this song did well like for the time like in general, but like to have this on the album, it just seemed odd to me. Right. And it's got more it of a, really, it's got more of a friend's the, well, feel yeah, to it. Yeah. And that fault, like the, the folkiness, production. I mean, I don't think mm-hmm. there's really anything else that's folky on the song, on the album. Mm-mm. So no, this is where that kind of stuck out to me the most. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's in an A flat. When I was a little bitty baby, my mama do. In that mold. Cotton fields back home. I love that thing on the front. Just a little half step D going from D to D, sh- or uh, from D to E flat. It was A flat to dun, A flat seven, dun, 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 D flat, back to A flat at this point. And then O, B flat minor seven, E flat seven, A flat. Now, or when it, when uh, when they come back to the, let's see, I want to see. In them old, they're on that A flat right there, but the bass line goes. 
And I love that. It starts with the five. So it starts on the E flat while they're on A flat. So in them. That's how that goes. In them. Oh, 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 B flat minor, E flat seven. And it goes through all that again, but when they get to the bridge, they get D flat. Dun, 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 dun. You can't pick it back to A flat. It's cotton F minor in them. Oh, A flat back to F minor. Dun, 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 dun. A flat F minor. Dun, 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 dun. A flat, but there's just no place like B flat minor seven and E flat seven and back to dun 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 dun. dun. The D flat and then the B flat right here, and that's effective when they do it because the other time they go just go back to A, a flat, and then the A flat and back to B flat minor seven, E flat seven. Mm -hmm. But in that bridge where they go to D flat, when them cotton balls get rotten, you can't pick very much cotton. That's just two chords, but listen to the bass line. And I think those are Brian's. Mm. Bum, 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 bum. Love the tune. It's a, or I love I love this version of it. And I I heard 2020 as a part of the 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 thing that came out where it was paired with Wild Honey in the mid 70s. And so I've heard this since I was a little kid. Mm. Anyway, that's uh, Cotton Fields. Cotton Fields. Uh, then we go into I went to sleep. Who wrote this one? <sighs> First of all. There's about 90 stars next to <laughs> I went to sleep here. So this is Brian just, and Carl. Okay. This is Brian. It is one of the only, if it might be the only one. That, oh, no. Good timing. Good timing is credited to Brian and Carl. There's a few in the catalog, but this is credited to okay. Brian and Carl that, Wilson. Yeah, because I mean, the music is unreal in this one. The spaces in between. Where the where the lyrics stop and you can just really hear the the instruments. It's like one of those one of those tracks that transports you to this like another planet. Like, well, and the harmonies are going all the time. It's like there's all, everybody's a lead vocalist because the harmonies. There's no you know except for in tiny little spots. They're always singing dense harmonies all the way through. Okay, it so too. I guess I should be more specific. When I'm, lyrics is what I'm talking about. Maybe there's harm not okay. vocals. Lyrics when the lyrics scrap out. And I guess the reason why I asked him who wrote it because the lyrics themselves are kind of like slice of life. Well, it's it, it, it. and another thing is this is from the they say I always heard it was from the end of the Friends period. And believe it or not, it was passed over for Friends. Oh, interesting. And it would have fit perfectly yeah, on Friends. 100%. It's that same vibe. You yeah, know? Oh, it's the for same. sure. And so it was a. So this is why it's kind of an older song. It's considered to be Brian's only original current tune on the album, but it was something that was he had been working on at the end of the Friends period. I'm thinking. You know, the other night I've dug into this tune before, and I've always loved it. It's a, it's a, it is a favorite. After, when I started digging into it the other night, I had, I really became inspired. There's some things in this tune that aren't in other Brian Wilson songs. It is, it's so brilliant and so beautiful. And you, I talk about some of these things lending themselves being a good fiddle waltzes. This is another waltz, by the way. Mm -hmm. How many have we yeah. covered in this time period? And there's not only this. There's the next songs of waltz, and they got plenty that were unreleased at this time that were waltzes. Uh, we did have a comment from one of our fans on uh, the Friends episode saying, uh, you know, what's the best beach? And I need to answer that, gentleman. Uh, but man, there's a lot of waltzes during this time, and, and most people don't know that they're waltzes, yeah. right? And so yeah, I was just so inspired that I really got excited. I told you I couldn't almost sleep yeah. that night after I'd been, I went to sleep, right? Yeah, and yeah, I started yeah. thinking about, I was thinking about the chords and I was thinking, okay, just go to sleep, just go to sleep. Yeah. And it was just, it was driving, it was just killing me. There's, it's in the keys of, it, it's in, it feels like it's in A and then it's also in D and, and just these two little s subtle ways. I mean, it's bare, you could barely hear the modulations and, and Brian also uses some major nine chords in it. He, it, it. It has some ninth chords in it, but a major nine is a specific type of 
chord that also has to have the major seven in it too. And it's a, it's a real, it's a, I've used it before in some compositions and it, it has a real distinct feeling and, and, uh, it's just, it, I, I was realizing as I was working on it, it's like, wow, you know, this, I'm trying to think of tunes where Brian uses major nine chords like this. And I, I don't think, you know, he uses lots of ninth chords in different ways all through uh, the catalog, but I'm not so sure about major nine chords. And so it, it really inspired me. I thought about doing a cover like we used to do, but our covers never really get that much traction. You yeah. Know? But so yeah, if we but do that you know, sort of a thing with yeah. it, and, you know, people Who love knows? the colors covers. I love the covers, but I just don't think they, you know, yeah. they, they go as far as, you know, um, right. some of this other stuff. Let does. me, but yeah, let's talk. Let's let me gonna, go ahead and get into some of the yeah, music. We start out, we're in the key of A to start out with. A, and then F sharp nine, and I talked about how that's more what the guitars are playing and the bass is playing that F sharp right there, and then B minor seven, back to that F sharp nine, and then B minor seven with an A in the bass, and then here's a D major nine chord, and then G major nine, back to D major 9, I'll voice it this way this time, and then back to G major 9, and then D, not, D major 9, and then C minor 7, and then an F, F sharp 7 with a sharp 5, and then B minor 7, and then E again. Sorry. I haven't made a major nine for a long time. Oh, and then we're back into the beginning, and I didn't play the beginning on the front, which is A, and then E minor seven, and then A, E minor seven, and then right here, there's an extra measure of A, and then D, and then F sharp minor seven with a C sharp in the bass, and then B minor seven, then F seven, F sharp seven, and back to B minor seven, and then C diminished, and then C sharp minor seven, and then E seven, getting back to A. Dun, 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 dun. on that right there okay, that so. is a beautiful beautiful uh that is such an underrated little known brian wilson gem that it, it, it it's kind of scary how <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh. uh, so i guess we better get off that for a little bit Whew. okay so uh time to get alone uh-huh another uh, waltz i love the melody on this one um and it has this like cool, like interesting change into the breakdown or whatever. Um, uh, there's this, uh, the strings mm -hmm. that are, are real on it that are super cool. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty much all I have for this one. Well, this was another one that was going to be given to Redwood at the same time that Darlin was being done during, you know, before the Wild Honey period. So this this basic track is from october of 67 mm -hmm. and then they they went in and i think they did the strings and stuff on it maybe more recently you know i know that there was work done on the track and i may, think maybe they might have even remade the track i'm not positive sure but it's uh so it was that old redwood tune that you know mike and carl said yeah you're not giving these tunes away we're gonna do them and i i this is a this is a loved tune in the beach boy category catalog it's just a an ama another amazing waltz um and it's i guess i could just get into the music i don't know yeah, do you yeah, have anything yeah. no more no no that's it just so it. key of d i look let's see i'm gonna get some of the bass line in there too and what did i see g 
down to E minor 7 and then A A7 and then down Minor seven, and then da, 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 da. D, F sharp minor with a C sharp bass, or F sharp minor seven with a C sharp bass, and then B minor seven, and then B minor seven with an A in the bass, G, and then D minor seven, and then G. That's a great change there. It does all that again, but then in the middle we've got a key change to C. Goes the G minor seven there. C back to C and then the F to dum. C then G minor C dun 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 After you go to F there. Then the A minor, and then to D minor, then to A minor, then D minor. But remember, the song is in D. So we go from D minor to D major back there to get back down. But that's the music too. Oh, love that song. Gosh, I love that song. Um, Never Learn Not to Love. Mm -hmm. So, love the title. Uh, but let, I'm going to let you take it. This is like, was probably my least favorite on the album. So, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I don't know why that is, but I'm hoping that you do your thing where you change my mind on it. Because I feel like there's probably a, well, musically a good song here. But it First just... of all, the thing that goes on in the beginning of it, I want to, maybe we'll play it in just, just a second after we get done talking about it. But it's a backwards it's a gong being hit, but they play it backwards. Oh, interesting. So you hear the, the first thing you hear is the end of the gong ringing out and you hear it up to the, to the okay. point of impact. Interesting. Right. And they recorded that down at the Capitol studios must have had a gong down there. Yeah. The yeah. Right. And I don't know if that was Dennis's idea or Steve Desper's idea, but, uh, it's a pretty cool thing. Uh, never learn not to love was the B side of bluebirds. They were working on it in 68 and that was about the time that Dennis was hanging around with Charles Manson. This is originally, this is a Charles Manson tune called Cease to Exist. Oh. And if you hear, in the first line in it is Cease to Resist. Dennis changed that a little bit. But if you listen to, you can find the original out there on the internet if you're, in, if you're into that type of stuff, folks. Uh, but it, Dennis does not change it too much lyric wise i mean a lot of the lyrics are charles manson's um and the even the music is similar but dennis does a a real dennis and carl produced it so i think carl helped on that but they they uh put some real dimension into the music and so that's that's the story of the tune okay um and i could i i do want to go ahead and have you play the very beginning of it so we can hear that backward gong effect and then let it get into the music a little bit and then i'll go through it the music is pretty interesting all right here's the gong effect eerie when you think of the connection yeah. of the tune but so it's in E cease to E sus 4 come and say you love me little bit of that sus 4 again da, 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 da. come on and be with me now alien blocks this is in 4 right now it'll go to 1 2 3 1 2 3 or maybe 6 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 back to 4 
Give up your world Come on and be with me I'm no kind, I'm no kind And I see And then we're still on a four But it gets into kind of a stuff Never had a lesson I ever learned A dun 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 Love me now closer, G, A, kind of a climb, C, F, G, E, D, D, D. There's another little alien block there. One, two, three. Pretty cool stuff. I it, it, it's it's a neat tune. It's a, it's it's a neat tune, and they performed it on the Mike Douglas show in '69. Oh. This along with I can I think I can hear music is what oh, they nice. they played for that. So they were into it, right? And this but this all went down before. It wasn't until August later this year that all the stuff went down with Charles Manson. By that time, Dennis had been away from it and had, right, right. had gotten. You just knew that yeah, it wasn't a himself, thing that yeah. yeah distanced himself before all the all the bad stuff went yeah. down and everything. So anyway, and then of course there's you know the they were all at Brian's house, Manson and the family, and, and <laughs> yeah, you know they they were uh, you know I I one story I remember hearing a long time ago is that Marilyn just hated them because they were filthy people you know just i they're just not their hygiene was yeah. terrible and so she'd clean all the bathrooms and disinfect everything after they left oh, <laughs> she was on to something and then also steve desper tells a story a scary story about charles manson pulling out a knife during one of the set not threatening anybody with it but just kind of getting it out and showing it off and that was kind of a moment for him where he's going okay this different uh, behavior yeah, yeah not, not normal behavior not into for, this yeah, shit yeah you know? <laughs> so anyway blah um, blah blah so then the next our prayer and cabin essence those are, are these and these are just direct lifts right well they're they're direct lifts and that they went back and got our prayer and cabin essence from smile. Right. And they are ba the basic smile recordings, but our prayer, they went into the Capitol studios and uh, they sweetened the vocals. They added some vocals to the, our prayer and find our prayer had never been finished and mixed during smile, but those, the basic singing had been done. So they're using that singing from 1966, but then they're adding a little bit of thickening voices to it and then finally putting it together and putting the uh, the effects on it so that you get what was finally on 2020 right and then cabin essence uh same thing the uh the only thing the all the music had been done during the smile period but carl had not recorded a vocal on it but they you know van dyke had written all the words so carl recorded a vocal in 68 and that truck driving part for dennis that's mixed way down in the middle uh a, uh i think a fan reminded me in the comments that that part was probably added at that point too um so but these this was the first time the people got an idea of what the loss of smile meant when they heard cabin essence and they're going, Oh but my But did they, gosh. did they know? Some of them did. Some of them, Some of them did. And, it, and several reviews at the time mentioned to say, what is this cabin essence thing? I mean, they might not have known that it was from smile, but they knew it was a, a brilliant Brian Wilson, Van Dyke parks tune, uh -huh. you know, that was just, it's it's a standout on on the album. Of course, we broke it down. If you want to know about the music for right. that, go to the Smile episode. It's exactly the same. This yeah. is Not this is this is here. the Smile yeah. music. Uh, but it you know it ends the you know the album you know or or two of Brian's 
big things, right. and especially from Smile. This is this is what I consider. Even though Mama says comes in on Wild Honey, and we get a few little nuggets of that little horn line on uh, Little Bird and Friends, and and we just get a few things. But this is the first. Boom. Right. Here's some bona fide smile right. material. Right. This is what smile would have been, a whole album with this type of brilliance going right. on in it. Right. And so the loss was felt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um so then that will that's the album. Well, yeah, and and so the, like I did I mention that the the album was released in uh February, I think February 10th of 69 and it got to 68 in the U.S., which, remember, Friends was 126, yeah. and so that was an improvement, but number three in the U.K. Oh, nice. You know, so all during this time that they're not popular in America, the Beach Boys were carried by England and Europe. There, it was England especially. Which is, you, know, you know, they were like, touring you know, a yeah. lot there, and, it, you know, that's well, where it, the Beatles are from. Yeah, well, <laughs> and, yeah totally. In the, um, we have a lot of people from um, England that, Listen to this podcast. Mm -hmm. The U.S. and, and England are our are, are two mm -hmm. largest demographics of people. It makes listen. sense. There's, yeah. I know there's tons still a ton of, of Beach fans. Boys fans. Oh yeah, my yeah. gosh, yes. Um, As a matter of fact, you know when Brian debuted Pet Sounds live when he did it in the early 2000s, he debuted it in London. Yeah. Same thing, I think, with Lucky Old Son too. Anyway, it's a, it's a, it's a great album. Uh, of course, we still got Breakaway to talk about. Yes, we'll talk about. So, let's, let's, so well, should we go ahead and let's talk go ahead about and do that? that? All right, real quick though, before we get into Breakaway, we just had a little technical difficulty. So different camera shots, lighting might be different, audio might be different. But anyway, that's why everything looks different. Just want to acknowledge that real quick. Um, so with Breakaway, do you want us? Do you want me to go? Do you want to go? What do you think? You you go first. Okay, I don't have a lot on Breakaway. The biggest thing for Breakaway for me is it's um, there's something super catchy about that. Ver ver I mean, something very familiar about that verse. I can't pick up what it is. I've been trying to pinpoint. I don't know if there's something else in the in the Beach Boys catalog. Do you know that what you said something about this the other day when we were when we were talking about Breakaway. I don't know if you remember this. Uh, that you uh, mentioned that part of it reminded you of Don't Worry Baby. And I was thinking about that later, and I thought of the, uh, Is the that, just the opening lines. And then the, there's some middle lines, oh, what she does to me when she makes love to me and Don't Worry Baby, where I saw, I saw the connection oh, okay. that you were talking about. And so I feel like that that's that phrase you the, said. Is there part of... Don't worry, baby, and break away. Okay. And it, yeah, I, didn't so want to bring I that. wanted to let you know okay, that you cool. were. Remember when we were talking? We were. Yeah, well, up. and, when, and yeah. you said you when I said that you're like, nah, and so I don't want to bring that up here because I don't want to look like a total idiot. But no. you know, no, okay, no. so there, there, there is no the, just kind of mm -hmm. how how that like. There's a line in there that I can see, see how, how the connection you. is. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. that's probably it. it. Took me thinking and I, about well, it for the thing a while. Too is, I. If that's what it is, I could see why I love this verse so much. I mean, mm -hmm. this is one of those songs where the verse, I actually like the verses more than I like the chorus, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and there's certain songs where that happens to me with where it's like, oh man, the, you know, I wish the, the verse is so good that it's hard for the chorus to follow up such a good, you know, act mm -hmm. before it. So right. um, that was kind of the biggest thing for me was just that. Dun, dun, that like that's been stuck in my head. That uh -huh. little you know melody. Yeah, I got to think is. about it. I said, well, that is, that part of it is. Okay, don't makes, worry, okay, baby. makes me feel better. Thank mm -hmm. you because I wasn't going to bring that up just because I I was you know when you were like I don't think so. But well, they, I think it just in that moment just that once, me, that it once, doesn't you, you know I had to I it was just me going over breakaway myself later on and then going oh no way and maybe not, I, I forgot i said i need to tell him he and, he and maybe writing. not musically like exactly no what's it going actually on. The, the 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 phrasing of it okay and the the you know you know even the way the melody climbs and stuff like that okay. so it's it's good job sweet awesome Excellent. thank you okay you can take it from here well breakaway was written by brian and reggie dunbar you know who reggie dunbar is to. Murray Wilson. Oh. So what what had happened? So this is 
I don't know if this is if this is in late '68 or whenever or early '69 when he approached Brian, but he wanted to do something to. He said we need to. He got in touch with Brian and said we need to write the boys a hit. You know the friends have been a disappointment, um, but do it again was come. You know, had come out probably. I don't know. Maybe it was before that. Anyway, really, it's the only Brian and Murray tune in the catalog, and it, and it and it's a good one. The the other thing that's fun for me is they worked on it a lot in basically like April of 69 and um, then they released it in June and it was backed with celebrate the news we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second but in between April them working on it and releasing it I was born in May of 69 oh. so that this is what they were working on right 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 and uh so uh, and anyway, wanted to make mention that it was uh, on the B side was another tune that never made it to an album at the time called Celebrate the News that Dennis wrote. And uh, I think we were discussing once about, you know, Breakaway. They were just getting away from Capitol Records, getting right. away to have yep. the new record company. And then also uh, Celebrate the News. That title could also be, <laughs> you know, I mean, little digs it capital or or whatever yeah you know, yeah I, that's i know some of that stuff has been hinted at before um one of the biggest things about breakaway is i've seen a quote from brian where he says it might be his most underrated tune oh okay Meaning his, maybe his his favorite among those that aren't recognized a lot in his in his catalog. Uh -huh. I think that's a big statement. And I know Carney, who was one when, when this was happening, cause she's like a, almost exactly a year younger than me born in 68, but she has made mention that she loves this tune too. This is a lot more recent, but, um, there's a lot of love for the tune out there in beach boy world. Yeah. is what I'm saying. Uh, the, it was on Spirit of America, the compilation that came out after Endless Summer, okay, of the greatest hit stuff, Beach Boys Go Legendary. Right, right. right. And so the, the funny thing, Endless Summer is all tunes from 1962 to 1965. There's no exception whatsoever. Well, when Spirit of America came out, that was the case also with the exception of a breakaway. breakaway. It was included. And I didn't know that when I was little, but I did know something about their, it seemed like their voices were different than they were on sure. dance, dance, dance. And yeah. do you want to dance? I noticed a difference, but didn't know why or what. And then finding out later on that, I guess it's because Capitol had released it as a single, but it had never been on an album. Someone decided to go ahead and just slip it on. It was like second on spirit of america so interesting little yeah. side note yeah. there um <clears throat> steven desper the engineer who recorded it and worked on it with brian said he was just obsessed with the thing and even after it was released he'd come down and work on it and change things in it knowing that it would never be changed on a released version it was just it was his toy he was playing with and oh, wow. just totally obsessed with it worked on it a long time he said but uh let's let's go ahead and and play some play of a little clip yeah here? Okay. it's a great track been great on sunflower oh yeah it's a really tough tune to find the tonal centers and the key centers on i'll talk about that in a second but beautiful vocal from carl there Brian sings lead. Or maybe Brian and Carl together. Now we got Al. I like I like that chorus, and I also like the break away, shake away. Anyway. 
Yeah, that course is that course is good. It's just you know, it's a whole like it, the verse is so good it doesn't mean the course is bad, but it's just you know like. Mm-hmm. Um, but even here, let's kind of listen to it right there. I was like, oh damn, maybe I need to retract that. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's just you know, there's not a lot going on in Beach Boy records, yeah. you know, and so the. You know, I hear definite tonal centers or key key centers of 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 C, the chorus and the and the intro where it starts, and then also B flat. I I'm, you know it seems like a lot of you, you, there's that's a home key at least in the end and in some parts in the middle, but there's. Man, there's a lot of different ways I've looked at this thing. I mean, sometimes I can, I'm thinking, man, is it an F? Or, you know, there's brief times it's, I, I need to stop right there because it, you can slice it a lot of different ways. It really reminds me of the, of the key changes in this whole world, which would come the, about the same time, mm-hmm. right? And it's in, he's into this bag of, of of a lot of key changes in a song and but uh they're not as clearly defined here as they are on this whole world mm-hmm. um that's one we never did get into in sunflower they're, you're just those two anyway we'll, 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 get, well yeah yeah we'll, we'll address <laughs> okay. that anyway so i'm just gonna go through the chords start c d minor seven g minor seven c and then f major 7 and then f and then d minor 7 g then we'll say g minor 7 with a c in the bottom and then the d7 kind of setting up maybe we're going to the then it goes oh we're in g minor okay i'm gonna quit all the feigning at the key signatures and just say the chords g minor then c then a7 and then D minor 7, and then G, and then C, B, uh, G with a B in the bass, and then B flat, and back to, that, 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 that could be home, and then we're playing 6, but same things again. Now, so we get to that G, or that B flat. B flat major seven, and then G seven sus four. Back to the chorus. then on the very end it just B flat uh, G minor and that might turn into B flat major 7 and maybe G minor 7 and that's just the refrain on the end but there's a uh, place out on the internet where they've isolated just the vocals on the end of that little tag, and it's heavenly. It's really, really, really pretty. Seek it out if you can find it, guys. Yeah. It's such a pretty song. Or well, seek it out and try to find it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah huge fan of that one. Um, kind of like, uh, like, I think Brian's right with the underrated thing. I think also maybe even like, especially for the casual fan unknown, you know, like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, yeah, like, that, like, that's, you know, that's, I get, I think that's his way of saying that. Yeah. His, yeah. you know, he did think of, I went to sleep. Yeah. You know, th- th- there's another one. There's a lot of gems from these periods. Mm-hmm. And that's what, I'm, what I've always said to you over the course of this thing. And so, and it's fun for me now is like, you, now, you know, what that, that late sixties wall means to me and and why it has the depth of what it has to me you know yeah no the uh how you have laid out this whole museum sanctuary makes so much more sense now that i've gone through this with you that's so satisfying (laughs) it really is because you know and i you can look at it chronologically sure okay this is this this and this but how you have it segmented by the music what what's happening with the music is that's the part that like unless you know the beach boys catalog like all so many of our viewers if they were to come down here they would be like this i get it 
Mm-hmm. I get it. Yeah. Someone like me, I mean, I, the timeline, obviously it's there, but like how you have it segmented by music where, you know, one wall stops and another one begins, man. It's, it's uh really well thought out and makes a lot of sense now that I've gone through this with you mm-hmm. for sure. That's, that's, I really appreciate that. Thank you. So, um, is that it for breakaway then? That is. Okay. And so now we've got our, so this is, um, like we said, this is the last episode of the podcast. However, this is not the last of us making Beach Boys content. Uh, in fact, we're going to make a shift here. Um, podcast is done, but we're going to still do um, just shorter form content about the Beach Boys. We've been doing these super long hour and a half, you know, long episodes, which has made sense for, for, for this format. But there's a lot of stuff we want to get into and, and go over that doesn't need that sort of, you know, chunk of time. Uh, and also along those same lines is we had a lot of sponsors. When you sponsored uh, an episode, you could suggest or, or ask for episodes you'd like to see. And we had a lot of suggestions. Some of them we covered, we were able to cover because it lined up with the podcast episode. Uh, but some of them we didn't. And so we're going to do some, we're going to get some of those out in the mm-hmm. short form content. You might see Um, We're going to do the YouTube shorts. You might see some of the uh, clips from a podcast um, to just generate interest in, uh, you know, bring more awareness to the channel. So part of that change is we're actually going to be splitting the channel. Um, This channel has been Matthew Hart's music. We're actually going to, that's good. We're going to make this exclusively Beach Boys stuff. This is going to be a, you know, Beach Boy content channel. We're going to break away Matthew Hart's music because obviously, as you all know, Matthew is, all uh, you know, a big Beach Boys guy, but he has the fiddle world. He is actually a really um, fantastic music teacher, as you all have experienced with him going over chords and teaching me about the history of, of the Beach Boys. He's a great teacher, and so we're going to um, really get ramped up on um, doing his online uh, teaching platform. And so that's going to be the that's going to be a big part of the other channel but any any really anything else outside of the beach boys will be on that other channel they're going to be linked together so like you'll be able to easily access them from yeah. this channel i'd love for as many people to subscribe to that as possible because getting to a certain number of subscribers helps us for sure yeah you know? definitely and if you and haven't it, liked or subscribed <laughs> folks <so> that <laughs> yeah but if yeah no that's a good point if you just like what matthew does uh in general uh and you'd like to see how he teaches you know Obviously, he has the violin uh, and the fiddle world, but he, we're just going to do, the, 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 gonna do the, guitar. There's going to be a, the, it's going to be a guitar heavy focus, which I've probably got more experience teaching guitar than I do violin. You yeah. Know? So in the so and so that's going to be a um, if you want to learn from Matthew, like you know, hey, I've been watching this guy for the last three years. I feel like. I can maybe learn how to play yeah. guitar because of how he teaches. So that's yeah, we're going to have a whole be, setup. It's going to be a lot, just some stuff for, you know, if a guy just wanted to get started, there would be a way to, to, to do that. Um, and then for the uh, beginning to intermediate player, there's going to be a lot of support material. But of course, there will be tune breakdowns like your favorite Beach Boy tunes. But there will be, you know, there's lots of other stuff that I, is especially from that era in the in the 70s and 80s that that I'm very familiar with and have taught before. And so we're going to do that, plus a lot of current stuff too. Yeah, yeah. You used, you know? you'd, you'd mentioned the other day that, you know, you used to get asked all the time for like Jack Johnson and sometimes, oh, yeah. you know, oh, the, Taylor uh, Swift. Oh, yeah, you know? when Taylor Swift first came out, I, that was... I, re- I was teaching at the time, and I do remember, I mean, it w- I was inundated with that <laughs> stuff, you know, and it, yeah. Because so. one of the most exciting things about learning guitar is learning how to play a song you like, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like getting, you know, um, getting someone to yeah. play a song as fast as possible. And giving someone uh, enough objective knowledge in a real simple direct way that is going to be how we can really get up and doing something quickly right you know, if, if if we're that beginner and then hopefully with the beginners and and already intermediate players some of my insight might be you know be that thing that swings a door open for you you know that's what's happened with you know with with past students of mine I, you know i'm very lucky to have many many national fiddle champions especially that, that you have taught. studied with me yeah yeah, you know, yeah. And, and uh and that they all do say it was the way that I was able to con- convey a, a certain 
you know, in, in, you know, whether it was my yeah. my style or the information I had yeah. or whatever. But anyway, I don't want to no, start you, you singing know, my praises no, too loud. No, there, but right? it's, there is something to be said about, I mean, you are, you know, I'll, I'll sing the praises you are sought after, you know, since you haven't been teaching as much, you've been asked to teach more. Well, so I haven't been, we've, I think we've been like two and a half years now without doing any private teaching yeah. at all. So, so the, um, and so that's going to be a big part of that. And if if you just want to support the channel and, and support what we're doing, you can just, you know, subscribe and help us get that subscribe subscriber count uh, as high as we can get it. Um, and so you can... Um, so you can still support us. Uh, you can support the podcast uh, with this uh, with the Beach Boys channel. There'll be a way. Essentially, you know, you would just be doing like a a, a way to support to keep this going. We're going to still keep doing Beach Boys content. Yes, we and are. We, and because we're doing less, we're trying. We're hoping to increase the frequency. You know, we we got on this kind of like two week routine that we've been on now. We want to maybe cut that down to one, uh, releasing one video a week. Uh, you know, maybe two if it's something super short, but just continuing to build this, we, you know, we, I have a, I have a goal that we'll talk about in, you know, one of the first pieces of content that we do, but I have this, I have this idea, this grand idea for all the Beach Boy fans out there. Cause one thing I have learned about doing this is a lot of be- these Beach Boy fans, all of you have these really good, valid opinions on things and you, you know, <laughs> and, and you like to speak them. And so it's I, the danger of doing a Beach Boys podcast, you know, or... and, and, Along the same lines, I mean, I have to. I should thank the the our audience as well because when we when we first started, I was you know I was on the camera, and then I was like, no one cares like about me. You're the you're the guy, and I took myself. I think it was about I don't know maybe the end of the first season where I kind of removed myself from a lot of the shots, and it was just more focused on you. And we had some of the people be like, well, can we see more of Adam talking? You know, mm-hmm. and so like like. I don't know. Community make, made me feel like it's okay to 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 not have the knowledge that I that I Matthew feel, has. I feel like all just so the lion's share. You know, there's been there's been so little negativity that it just so doesn't little. even matter, and yeah. and that's what I'm all about. Uh, I I I really want to again commend all of the other Beach Boy influencers oh, out yeah. there, and and uh, you know I'm hoping to do some work with I want them to collaborate in, the, fu- with them. Fu- yeah. in the future when we get when, you know that's all part of the plan too because that's the neat thing about this uh, this whole deal with we're the all working internet. towards the same goal yeah you yeah, know? yeah we really are no. we just want the Beach and, Boys to to live on you know and there's just there's I just really you know my primary goal still is to let people how important or let people know how important the i feel like the brian wilson and the beach boys are for sure you know and to keep spreading that message even though it's getting you know when you when you first came in it's like one of the things you said all my musician friends they talk about brian wilson brian wilson what is you know what what, what's what's going on with that so it's not like not like yeah. Now you you feel like you have a <laughs> yeah. a better handle on yeah, that, right? <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, so you know, in the uh, as you can tell, we have we have plans. We have a lot of big plans to keep this channel going, and uh, we need your support. And um, whether it's like through a like, a subscribe, whatever it may be, but we're going to continue to pump some stuff out. You know, I might not be. I'll always be here, okay? But there are going to probably be times more often than not now yeah. where it's just going to be videos mm-hmm. of Matthew. But just know. I'm behind the camera. If, yeah, okay? well, if, if Adam's being, not here, yeah, it's not it happening. ain't happening. <laughs> it's yeah, not yeah, happening. There's no way. So, so. Um, but yeah, you know, it just like know how to turn you know, one of these for example, um, just kind of you mentioned earlier, like the sunflower tracks. We never did like demos of them, so we're probably gonna do some. Yeah, you know, we're gonna do, we'll we'll demo do this videos. whole that you we know? could throw. It, yeah, I'd love to do it, and and really take some time with it to to really sit and digest it almost like I would in a workshop or a camp setting and not rush through it like yeah. I'm doing in the episodes to really take one kinda, song and really yeah, yeah. You okay. know, go this in. this whole world jumps out at me well that's gonna really be the first quick. one yeah, we break yeah. down then there okay. we go it's just decided just decided here <laughs> okay. uh so you know that's pretty much it for the podcast I mean is there anything else you know wanna... other than yeah uh, just uh let's always uh just remember that smile that you send out returns to you i still have to remind myself that 
every day. I mean, I don't care, guys, if you're walking into a grocery store or getting out of your car, you know, you're going to you're going to get what you give. And and uh, what we want to see out there are smiles. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, so that's one thing I do. I I love about this about that whole smile thing is as I really feel like, you know, Brian really understood that importance of a smile, and that's why you hear that blatant humor in smile and smiley smile is because it was intentional. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So good. So is that that's it then? That's it. Thank you, everyone. Yes, we will see you, you soon in uh, a different format, but um, I guess. Uh, that's a wrap.